little road map is posted on these two doors as well in a very professional poster that was done very late last night and I, but it has all the information it's not pretty but it has all the information you need so we'll go through those um, these value sets we're going to take a break and again we'll close the day with the report back because everybody in the room wants to hear kind of what happened through the course of the day for everybody else questions on the agenda Gary will. Yeah, Gary will explain that. He's going to go through each one. He'll give a definition for each one of these so that you can, in your mind, figure out where you want to be and, and just make a note. And you have agendas there, so you can just make a note of the room you want to be in at that time. Um, and I guess the last point, just before I turn the, the uh, mic over to, to Neil, is that I would really like, we talked about operating values, and I gave you some, and I, I'm, I'm kind of assuming, maybe I shouldn't, that, that we, kind, we have agreement on how we're going to work together over the next couple of days. But I would like to propose that the agenda is also part of our, our operating values because um, we, we've got to get this information because there's a lot of people downstream in the communities and stakeholder groups that are counting on us to start the process of developing that factual base of information so that they can meaningfully be involved in this process. So um, last points I wanted to make were around uh, washrooms and uh, which are just at the top of the stairs here. You walked right by them when you came down. Fire exits, the nearest ones are there. When you get to the harbor room, there's a door to the outside. So, and you'll be walking right by the, the washrooms when we go there. We will take the breaks um, as outlined in your agenda. We will stick to the, the process. Um, so uh, lunch will happen at quarter after 12. It'll start again 60 minutes later, regardless of, you know. So right after lunch, go to the room where you want to be. Don't come back here. Well, I mean, we'll have this room divided. So questions about the agenda? All right, I've, I've talked long enough because really, after Gary and, and Neil, just give you some more information, the floor is basically over to you. So we're here really to listen, not to talk. Okay, thanks, Rick. So I think some of you in the room will know me and some of you won't. Uh, my name is Neil Davis. Constrained by technology. <laughs> so my, my name is Neil Davis. I'm the, the Pensima coordinator with DFO. So I'm sort of one of the people on the ground who's trying to move this thing forward, hopefully with the help of many people in the room. Um, and what, what I want to do, just to sort of set us off, is give you a bit of an overview of <coughs> what the Pensima initiative is and, and where what we're doing today might fit into all of that. So in very broad terms, just at the outset, I think it's important for everyone to know that Basically what we're going to walk through here is all of the different pieces that we might want to try and capture that are important to sort of paint a picture of the social, the economic, or the cultural sort of features or important pieces of, of, of the Pensima area. Um, and, and we've got a team of consultants here who are, who are helping us with that. What we're looking for from this group is uh, a bit of dialogue with these consultants and with the, the group of us that are sort of working on the initiative to say, well, given how you've scoped things now, is that capturing the information that this room and people beyond this room who we need to include in this conversation feel should be captured? So you're going to have information that you think should be a part of this, but you're also probably going to have thoughts about how do I want to see that information represented in a report like this? How do we want to communicate that outwards? So this is a beginning for that kind of conversation. And I think as Rick was mentioning earlier, we want to sort of make clear that this isn't the only opportunity for that. So this, this group of, of, or this team that's working on this report will also be following up with some of the people that are in this room, seeking out other people who are going to have important sort of input to this kind of exercise. Um, so, so just to sort of set a bit of a tone and, and um, set some expectations for what we're doing together here, uh, I hope that's sort of helpful. In terms of what I want to speak to in this presentation, I'm just going to give you a bit of background about the initiative to sort of give you the bigger picture. 
a little bit about what we've done to date and where we want to go in the near future and, and beyond. And then how does this work on socioeconomic and cultural information sort of fit into this? So to start at sort of the beginning and provide a bit of context of why even undertake something like integrated management, you know, we, I think we can all recognize there are certain sort of environmentally driven challenges that oceans face. Uh, there are also a number of economically driven challenges and there are other kinds of challenges. Um, and this has led to sort of a growing concern around the world about how do we manage oceans to try and address some of these challenges. In Canada, some of that concern is what led to the development of the Oceans Act, which is a federal piece of legislation that sets out a bit of a direction for the future in terms of how oceans should be managed. One of the things that the um, the, uh, the Oceans Act led to was an ocean strategy that says, let's do integrated oceans management as one tool or means of trying to address some of these challenges. So, as I mentioned, there was an Oceans Act passed in 1996. This led to a bit of a strategy for how do we sort of take that act forward. That in turn led to an action plan. So if we have this broad strategy, what are the things we want to do first? And that action plan says, without a strategy to more effectively manage our oceans and address challenges like failing oceans health, growing conflicts between user groups in oceans, <coughs> and a weak industry sector, there will be continued both environmental degradation and lost economic and employment prospects. So that sort of takes us to the Pensema initiative. And you can see a map on the right hand side there, which sort of outlines in dark blue the study area. So it extends from the Alaskan border out to the edge of the continental shelf and down to Brooks Peninsula on the west coast of Vancouver Island and about Campbell River or so on the east coast of Vancouver Island. The initiative itself is a collaborative planning process that's intended to develop one of these integrated management plans for this study area. Its goal in very broad terms is to be a tool that helps ensure sustainable human uses and conserve sort of the ecological diversity upon which the, some of those uses are based uh, of this area. The planning process itself is intended to bring together the diversity of interested parties who have some sort of stake or, or, or interest in how things move forward with respect to how we manage oceans together in, in this process to have sort of opportunities for input to what we do together and what we develop. So w why is this necessary? Why would we want to undertake something like integrated management? Well, this is a slide that I think illustrates some of the challenges that oceans face. We've got all kinds of different things happening in oceans. We've got different kinds of human activities. We've got different kind of ecological values or features that we may be trying to manage for or conserve. And you know what? They happen in a lot of the same spaces. So we need some sort of coordination around how we manage for all of these different things that brings together the relevant management agencies who currently may be managing this over here while someone else is managing that over there. But it also needs to bring together the groups who have some interest or stake in these different activities so that they have a chance for that dialogue and input to how do we resolve the way we want to manage these many different things that are happening in the same spaces in our oceans. A acknowledging that as we move forward there may be even more activities that we're trying to manage for. Sure, yeah. I mean, on the, on the left here we have uh, a list of things that are represented. So the first is a, this green shape, which is right there, which is a proposal for a wind farm. The red line illustrates salmon migration routes, so you can see them following some of the coastlines. Salmon net fishing areas are captured with these sort of pink polygons, which you can see in some of the inlets and some of the sort of the coastal areas. You've got representing with represented with cross hatching some of the watersheds, which which will drain into this marine area. Uh, sponge reefs in the the red blobs up and down Hecate Strait and into Queen Charlotte Sound.